from the preceding, we know that uh, delta y is slope 2 times y2 minus slope 1 times y1, where again the slope is considered to be the magnitude of the slope, considered as a scalar quantity. Um, now, ask what's the change in potential energy? Okay, expression for the change in potential energy, well that's the weight times delta y. The, what's an expression for the work done by the non-conservative force on the system? Well, first of all, what is the non-conservative force? It's the frictional force. Okay. Now, the, when I asked the question, the first answer I got was delta W and C on is delta PE. So why would that be? Well, delta W and C on is delta PE minus delta KE. And delta KE, the change in kinetic energy, and where'd my chalk go, is zero. between the initial and the final point uh, of the uh, motion. A very crude diagram here. Uh, you get your delta S1, your delta S2, your delta Y. Uh, and starting from rest, ending at rest. So delta KE is zero. So that's one possible answer, and that's a good answer, because we want to bring the conservation of energy into the problem. Uh, I had intended to bring it in afterwards, but it can be brought in right now, and that's fine. Uh, that delta W and C on is what? What's another expression for that? Well, another expression for that is the work done by the frictional force, because that's the only non-conservative force that presumably that's acting here. Um, so what's the delta W and C on? Well, it's negative, and you multiply uh, coefficient of friction times the weight, and I'm using the weight here because we're using a small slope, and the small slope approximation, normal force is approximately equal to the weight, so uh, this, this is mu times the normal force, but we're using weight for the normal force, times the distance or the displacement um, of the ball on the two ramps. Now we're also assuming um, that the coefficient of friction is the same with both ramps. And there's no reason it shouldn't be very nearly the same. The ramps are constructed of the same material and have the same dimensions uh, within manufacturing uncertainties, <coughs> manufacturing and handling uncertainties. Okay, so anyhow, we have this. Now, uh, it took us a while to figure out what mu should be. But let me point out <coughs> that yeah, this is the kind of thing we're looking for. Um, we have three equations here, and every quantity in every equation is equal to every other quantity in every one of these equations. Why is that? Well, this equation is an equality between delta W and C on. Uh, these two equations are both equalities um, where something is related to to the work done by the non-conservative force on the system. We have two different expressions here, but they have to be equal to each other since they're both equal to this one. And then in these two equations, uh, both involve delta PE on one side, so uh, the other two expressions are equal to one another. What two expressions can we most profitably set equal to each other in order to find the coefficient of friction, and that, of course, is our ultimate goal. We want to find the coefficient of friction from our data. Okay. Well, if we set this expression equal to this expression, that's good. Now, one person uh, uh, set this equal to this. That's a good start, but it's even better to set this equal to this. Among other things, the weight's going to divide out when you set the two equal, um, and everything else is going to give us a nice, simple expression. So that would then be weight times delta y over the weight times, over the negative of the weight times delta s1 plus delta s2. And I was at first a little careless with my sign there. Um, so that uh, the weight cancels out 
we get delta y over the negative of delta s1 plus delta s2. And I was careless with parentheses there. You want to do better than that. So it's a, the delta, weight times delta y. Well, weight divides out. You just have your delta y here, slope 2 delta s2 minus slope 1 delta s1 over the negative of delta s1 plus delta s2. Now I ran out of room here with the final expression for the coefficient of friction in the small slope case is then this. Uh, we multiply both numerator and denominator by negative 1, and we get this expression for the coefficient of friction.